our differences, but nothing's more important than family. <laughs> I'm proud we're family! You know, me saying that I was pleasantly surprised by this film is a complete understatement. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Coco. But before we get into the review, help your boy out. Go ahead and click that subscribe button, become one of my subscribers. Also, click the bell so you can be notified when I make uploads. And also, give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. And, you know, just like after like seeing this movie, it's like, you know, this is one of the best films of the year. <laughs> Like, like seriously, that's how I like, I wish I could sing this whole review or whatever, because it has to do with music or whatever. And literally, as I was walking out of the theater, they had music playing. I was dancing as I was going down the stairs, turning the corner and going out through the, out the foyer. And when I couldn't hear the music anymore, that's when I stopped dancing, because that is seriously how much I really enjoyed this film. I just, I won't even spoil it for you here. I mean, well, wait any longer. I just like, seriously, this is one of the best movies I've seen all year i was presently surprised and to be honest with you you know you shouldn't underestimate uh, any movie um you, you also shouldn't judge a movie by its cover because when i first saw the trailers for this i was like okay you know another disney pixar film you know it's gonna be good it's not gonna be toy story good but oh no i was wrong there it is great let me talk about the directors and the reason why i brought up toy story is a good reason it's two directors here we have lee is called you know correct co-directed by two people lee unrich and adrian molina now mr molina this is his first movie that he's ever done and he did a great job but lee unrich has had his hand in the pixar game for a long time because he was co-director for finding nemo he was co-director for monsters inc and of course he did coco and those are great and he was also the co-director for toy story 2 and he also was the sole director for toy story 3 and I love that movie. Like, seriously, at the end of Toy Story 3, I started crying. I really did start crying. It was so sad. I am not ashamed of saying that. I'm a grown-ass man. And when I saw Toy Story 3, it was one scene. If you've seen, I'm probably sure you've seen Toy Story 3. But it was one uh, scene towards the end of Toy Story 3 where all the toys was holding hands. And if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about or whatever. You know, I, when it was on that little conveyor belt. And I don't want to spoil it for you if you haven't seen it. But man, was you at the edge of your seat doing that scene or whatever. But then at the very end where the toys were being passed off to the other character. And I don't want to spoil it for you. That's when the tears started coming down my eyes. And so that's just one reason why I love this movie Coco so much. Because this guy right here, Lee Unrich or whatever, was attached to that movie. And he is a fantastic director. Like, I cannot recommend, you know, this film enough. It's just that great. And I'll also just go ahead and say the Toy Story, the Toy Story trilogy is one of the is the best trilogy out of all time. Better than the Dark Knight because the Dark Knight Rises was lacking. Better than Godfather because Godfather 3 was lacking. And, you know, you can list any other. It's better than Lord of the Rings. It's better than the Star Wars trilogy to me. You know, if you want to fight in the comments about that, we can. But to me, the Toy Story uh, trilogy is the best trilogy of all time. And uh, Lee Ungrich, he had to do, he had to deal, uh, you know, with this movie like he did in Toy Story 2 and 3. So that's just like a true testament of how great this movie is. But what the movie is about, let me calm down. Well, I don't got to calm down. Let's have fun. What the movie is about is there's a young boy named Miguel. And from the very beginning of the film, the first frame, we get narration. And the narration is great because as we get in narration, we get to see this beautiful world in the Spanish or Hispanic community. And me, you know, as a black American, African American or whatever, black guy, you know, I'm not too familiar with the Spanish uh, community. So if you've seen this film and I saw it in English, of course, because I don't speak Spanish. Um, if you've seen this film, you can put in the comments, you know, how, you know, um, you know, if they did a great job of adapting the Spanish culture or whatnot, you know, please let me know. But, you know, the little bit that I know, I think they did a great job, you know, of, you know, putting a culture on screen or whatever, you know, kind of makes me want to learn Spanish, you know, and I don't learn Spanish. I got Rosetta Stone somewhere over there in the corner, but, you know, and I got through one of like the first few lessons, but, you know, I stopped a long time ago. But anyway, or whatever, when there is a culture in a movie or anything that I am not too familiar with 
and that that the material can want it ten, can motivate me to learn more that's just another testament of how good it is so we got that as miguel is narrating and he starts telling the backstory of his family and where they come from where their roots are grounded or whatever and the little intro story is great you get attached easily to the story to his character to his whole family and whatnot and his family is not too fond of music. I don't want to say why. You got to see the movie for yourself. They're not too fond of music. They like shoes. And, you know, he's a musician or whatever. I mean, that's just who he is or whatever. And, of course, his family doesn't want him to do that. But as he's being a little kid running around, something happens. And he has to, he ends up in the afterlife uh, in the land of the dead. And, you know, he, he meets this other person and they go on a journey on an adventure to really find out, you know, what really happened to their family and why they are the way they are. And that's just something right there that just goes with the directing and the writing is this movie is not necessarily for kids, but it is uh, kid friendly. But for this to be a Disney and Pixar film, for them to be dealing with death so much, and I know little kids know about death. It is not a dark and somber film. It's still a uh, fun. It's still lively. There's still a lot of uh, colors and there's still a lot, a lot to laugh at and within this film so with them able to do that with death being such a prominent factor in this film that just shows just how great the film really is and there can be a number of aspects in the film where it comes to the characters the plot the story the cinematography the score the scope everything you know that you can pick apart you know which one you like the most but it's hard for me to pick out which one i like the most because they're so like every aspect of this movie is so great there's really just nothing for me to complain about at all and like this movie from the very beginning it just gets better and better and better and better as the film goes on to where you just seem to be like like okay wow you know what i'm saying like i can't take anymore you know what i'm saying it's just too good i mean it ends on a high note you know there are moments of, of tension as well and where you're on your seat and you're like oh no you know what is the hero going to do now you know how are they going to get away you know they're racing against the clock i mean there is like it, it's just so much about it but um I, I love miguel as a character um as far as any other characters the only one that just stood out to me is somebody named benjamin bratt um who plays somebody named ernesto de la cruz and i love all that as well i talked about you know the songs and this thing as well you know seriously if someone i probably wouldn't buy it but if somebody were to give me the soundtrack for this movie i, I would probably pop it in my car and listen to it or whatever with the, i was gonna say with the windows down but i never drive with the windows down that's just me but seriously i mean it was some lovely songs in this thing but really the i, I was talking about how you can't pick out my favorite part the most I will say, I'll go ahead and do that now. I mean, they were all great. You know, no aspect in this movie was lacking. But the best thing that I do like about this is the story and the plot. The, the story, basically, for the most part, is just about family and how you can put family, you, you put family first amongst anything or whatever, because those are the people... For the most part, they care about you the most. Well, I will say care about you the most. And, you know, I don't, everybody grows up differently. You know, some of you watching this be like, no, nah, my family has done me wrong. But that just goes to show in this film that your family does not necessarily have to be a biological relationship. Your family can be whoever you make it to be your best friends, you know, your mentor, your teacher, or, or whoever. You know, you can make your, you can, if, if you choose to, you can make your family uh, be whoever you want to be. Um, but you know, by doing that or whatever, those people in that family that you make up yourself or biological, they care about you the most or whatever. And there's just so much to learn about this, about family, family dynamic, uh, communication. Communication is very, uh, you know, a, a very important thing in this film. You know, also just believing, you know, who you are and just sticking to your roots and going after it. I mean, seizing the moment. I mean, you can't be scared or whatever. You can have as much faith as you want. But if, if you don't put works behind that faith, that faith is dead. You can have all the talent in the world as well. But if you don't work on your craft and just grind it in day and out, you're not going to be the best version of yourself. And this movie Coco hits on all of that or whatever. And like, seriously, when it comes to do with culture, you know, some people are like, oh, I've never heard of that before and roll your eyes. But something that you some people may roll their eyes at, at the beginning of this film just because they're just ignorance 
or whatever, they really drive it home towards the end to why certain things in people's culture is just so important. And just because it may not be important to you, it may be very important to a number of other groups of people or whatever. So you just have to respect it or whatever. And as far as culture is concerned, I've never done any of the things that the characters do in this movie, but I really do appreciate what they did. And I learned something or whatever. And like, like I said, the, the, uh, the, 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 the gets better and better as the film progresses on and on. And like the plot just gets thicker and thicker and thicker. So I'm like, you think you figured everything out. You think you have an idea of where the plot is going to go and how this movie is going to end. But no, it doesn't do that. Every time you think that or whatever, it flips it on its head and gives you something more, something new to attach yourself to with a few edge of the seat, uh, edge of your seat moments. And also the cinematography and the effects in this film is like remarkable. Like it is some beautiful, beautiful computerized images in this movie that just speak volumes of just how detailed things can be and just all the little tinkering and here and there it really did feel like a different world that you was a part of when one character is going from the, the land of the living to the land of the death and the, what thing what like in certain cultures they always put a strong emphasis on just because you die that does not mean that that's the end of life i mean for example i like comic books in um captain america civil war if you've seen that movie with black panther uh, when his father died, and he, that's not a spoiler, you know, he says that, you know, in his culture, death is not the end. It's just a stepping off point to another way of life. And this movie, Coco, hits on that too or whatever, because at one point I was like, man, I mean, like, I don't I don't want to die right now. Of course, I want to live as long as I can. But I'm just like, I mean, if they got all this going on in the, in, in the land of the dead after you die, I mean, hey, I, I'm not a friend of dying over there. They're over there kicking in and having fun and doing this and doing that. And it's much more colorful than the land of the living. So, you know, so that was just nice as well and I, I just really like how detailed they were with all that and it's just a great film guys like I, I really did enjoy this this is something that I will be buying on blu-ray or DVD 4k whatever when it is released on home video because I, I want to watch it again over and over again uh, I hopefully they'll have like a director's commentary when they watch it because that's just another experience I want to go back and look at all the behind the scenes and how they made this film and just look at all look at all that or whatever because I, I really did enjoy this film it was great it was a blast you know this is easily one of the best action adventure comedies um you know disney animations that i you know not not what animation that i've seen all year and it's not this is the best animation i've seen all year it's literally one of the best movies i've seen all year i can easily put this in my top 10 without any doubt whatsoever if i had to rate coco out of a 1 out of 10 i would easily give this a 9.5 out of 10 yes a 9.5 out of 10 and the only reason i am not giving this a 10 out of 10 is because for me i've never given a movie a 10 unless it made me uh emote unless I, it brought the emotion out of me and i just start crying here and there or something like that or just a little tear and I, I didn't tear up i teared up in toy story 3 and you know and other films that i've given tens to uh, or whatever but i did not like you know it's, there were some other people that cried in this movie but it didn't pull on my heart strings that much but it's still a great film so i give it a 9.5 out of 10 but guys that is just my opinion for coco have you seen coco or do you want to see it have i turned you on have i turned you off do you agree with me or do you disagree with me let me know in the comment section below let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing if you like this video go ahead and give me the thumbs up and if you don't like this video that's fine just leave me a comment below why and still give me a thumbs up since you're watching this on youtube go ahead and subscribe to my youtube channel so become one of my subscribers get all the content that i have to provide you can also click the bell so you can be notified when i do make uploads and also guys you can go to my website check me out there bookmark it i do have written reviews at justmyopinion.net i would really appreciate it also look me up on social media facebook instagram and twitter all that good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen and i made it very easy for you guys by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below but guys i just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for this disney pixar animated movie coco with the co-directors Lee Unrich and Adrian Molina. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace. <laughs>